My Summer Car is a life simulation game disguised as a car building simulation game. It's pretty close to leaving early access and it's a game that I've enjoyed a lot and has also driven me crazy. There is no story to My Summer Car, well no narrative storytelling at least. You play as a Finnish teenage boy in the year of our lord 1995. Your parents have gone away on vacation and have left for the entirety of the game, leaving you to fend for yourself. You're tasked with rebuilding your family's old Datsun 100A, or as the game calls it, the Satsuma. As the namesake of the game, this is your summer car. Building and maintaining this car is the driving motivation of the game, and no, I will never apologize for making puns. Now as I said, this is a life simulator pretending to be a game about building a car. In other building sims, like Car Mechanic Simulator, your sole focus is repairing, rebuilding, restoring and selling cars, and nothing else. In my summer car, not only are you rebuilding a car, but you also need to survive the harsh Finnish countryside. You need to eat, drink, and work to keep the lights on. That's right, in my summer car, you need to pay bills. Multiple bills. This is a true survivalist's game. Need food? You'll need to go into town to buy it. Need money to buy the food? Maybe you should try getting a job. You'll need to chop wood, suck out septic tanks, or sell homemade alcohol to make money. There's some more aggravating and less effective ways, but you get the idea. Now you can blow all that hard-earned money on car parts and alcohol. Alright, I guess you should buy some food too. You did remember to refrigerate the food, right? The Setsuma's engine, know everything on the car really, must be built from the ground up. It really is satisfying when you finally get her fired up for the first time after hours and hours of work. The difficulty of this game is hard to judge. Most games hold your hand and tell you how to do everything. My summer car will tell you nothing. How far you get on rebuilding the car will go as far as what the player knows. I can't know what it's like to play this game with zero knowledge on how engines work. Before I played My Summer Car, I had already played Car Mechanic Simulator, and prior to that I had been a gearhead since my teenage years. I already knew how an engine worked. I knew how a car is built and the different types of engines and displacements they can have. What I'm trying to say is someone with no knowledge of how engines work in the slightest might have a lot of difficulty here, but someone that might even know a little bit about it can get through this part pretty quickly. There are many guides out there to help you along the way if you need it. While I might understand how an engine works, and while I might get what a carburetor does, in real life I've never had to set the air-fuel ratio in one, so I did need a little bit of help with that. I've also never aligned a real-life camshaft, or had to set my rocker arms. A guide is also very helpful when you're doing the wiring in the car, which, if done wrong, can lead to very deadly results. While building the engine is probably some of the most fun in this game, once you know how to do it, it goes very quickly, which can be a little sad. There's not much reason to disassemble and reassemble the engine over and over again, it's kind of redundant. The only real reason to do this is if you blow a piston head or something, which was probably your own fault to begin with. The game does have parts that degrade over time, but I've never really had it become much of an issue. If you don't know anything about building a car, I'm sure everything I said in the last two paragraphs was gibberish, and I'm sorry. I'll do my best not to talk shop too much for the rest of the video. Once your car is fully built though, now you get to have the real fun. Spending all your hard earned money on as many trashy mods as you can afford. Make sure you add a tacky paint job too that you did on paint.net. Now this is a car for men of real taste. Peak car culture. Aside from your trusty Satsuma, my summer car is a variety of cars you can drive. You'll get access to your uncle's work van that he eventually gives to you after he gets a DUI. You can win this screaming metal death trap in a card game. Like I said before, you also have a tractor to deliver wood and you have this truck to suck up poop. You also get to ride around on your moped or take the bus. Lastly, you have this monster of a car that you can, uh... I'll steal it! No one will ever know! While the difficulty curve on building the car might be hard to gauge, the difficulty of life in this game isn't. This game is not fair, and sometimes not fun. But in full disclosure, the developer is very upfront about this. On his website, he even says that this game is not fun. By the way, look how amazing this website is. It's so retro, I love it. Anyway, the game is unfair. I can't tell you how many times I flipped my van to find myself stranded with no way to flip it back over. 
If you blow your engine up, well, too bad. Now you're gonna have to find a way to get it home and rebuild the engine, asshole. Just don't die of dehydration or starvation in your long walk home. If you can't be bothered living with your mistakes, you can always just reload your last save. There's no shame in it, I've done it before, especially in this video. Outside something like The Sims, I can't think of any other game where you can accidentally burn your home down. This is also a game where you can be sent to jail for not paying fines for illegally dumbing human waste in the water supply. The game never tells you these things can happen, but they might. You can also play on permadeath, and boy let me tell you how many close calls I've had when playing on permadeath. For the sake of this review I didn't do it, but it's my preferred way to play. It's very sobering when a semi-truck veers into your lane on the highway while you're going 100 km per hour and kills you instantly. 60 hours of that file, gone in a second. You can also die in some really horrific, realistic ways. Not only can you be killed in a road collision or by burning to death, you could die by drunk driving, and that can either be by you getting hit by a drunk, or you doing it yourself. Nothing like drinking 13 beers and veering right into traffic. This game almost asks you to bring a case of road sodas. Hell, the Wikipedia and fans even encourage this behavior. I mean, it is a video game after all, right? You can also be electrocuted, set on fire by smoking while filling up your gas tank, and drown and so on. Each death, no matter how terrible, is followed by your death making the newspapers, and this very cheery song playing. Your life is fragile. Going 110 miles per hour in a stolen car might end poorly. When you fuck around, you really find out. I recommend making up backup saves just in case. When you burn your house down, if you save, it can't be undone. And if you commit enough crimes and don't pay your fines, you'll be locked up so long that you might as well reset the game. Part of the charm of my summer car is the place you live, Periarvi, the countryside of Finland. Now I've never been to Finland, I haven't even been to Europe, but I've spent time in the country before. So I do understand the feeling the game is going for. This game nails the feeling of country living. The long drives you take on unpaved roads, making damn sure that your tank is full so you don't run out of gas in the middle of nowhere, and how truly pitch black it gets at night. This game is so dark at night, it might look like your monitor is off. You better grab that flashlight. I swear you could mistake in this for a horror game. Hell, I could edit the footage right here to make it look like a horror game. And no, I'm not gonna jump scare you. The developer Johannes Royula said in an interview he grew up in a small town in Finland. And while he was more interested in mopeds and computers, he did have a 1960s BMW he worked on for a short period of time. And while nothing in the game is his experience, it is the experience of living in the Finnish country. Generalized perhaps, but the feeling nonetheless. Another thing to note is the car itself. In real life, the Datsun 100A and its successors were really popularized in Finnish culture in the 1990s. The Datsun was somewhat spotlighted in the Finnish film Pohayama. Fans have assumed that this movie is the reason for the car being in the game. However, it should be added that this car was fairly popular with teenagers at the time, based on how cheap they were and how easy it was to get parts. Think of it like getting a Honda Civic in America. These Datsuns are so liked, I was even able to track down two songs dedicated to them while doing research. Then I went down a Finnish rabbit hole of looking at all these videos about Datsun 100As and its variants. It's kind of fascinating to find an entire subculture in a language you can't even speak. Something that was somewhat awing while finding these videos is how detailed the car and game is. Even with the janky graphics, the car does look pretty much like the real Datsun. Anyway, I've gone way off track. Now that your car is built and you spend 60 grand on racing parts, you can start racing. After it was inspected. You did get the car inspected first, right? Okay, I'm going to be very transparent about this. I am awful at the rally. 
I've won it in the past on older versions of the game, but a lot in the game has changed since then. While recording this, for the life of me, I just couldn't help but mess up somehow. Sometimes in heartbreaking fashion. It really takes a lot of practice without a wheel to do this correctly, and can be quite difficult. Even with the wheel, it will still take a lot of practice. Some people are probably just naturally good at this, and they'll tell me to get good, and they're probably right, I should. Now when you're doing things that are not driving, mouse and keyboard gets you by just fine, I would recommend doing that. Please use a controller for driving. For most of the footage, that's what I did. If you have a wheel, I would definitely recommend using it. While I do have a wheel that I use, I have a very bad setup for it, so getting it together is kind of annoying, and my chair doesn't really work well with the pedals. While I haven't used the wheel to do a lot of rally racing in this game, I have used it for the casual driving, and it works very well. Especially when you want to do something like rev matching, it's very fun to pull off. Anyway, back to the rally. While I didn't do well in it, I can still explain it to you. Rally racing is time-based, so you'll be racing the clock and not other cars. Not that you can't do that in this game also, but we'll get into that a little bit later. In my summer car, the rally is broken up into two days, Saturday and Sunday. Saturday will be the first half. We will be driving from Periave all the way to the other end of the map. On Sunday, you'll be doing that same route in reverse. The times you make on both days will then be added into your final score. The dirt roads that you've been driving on the entire game of your hometown are filled with bumpy and treacherous roads. This is where it's very important that you've memorized the route. You've been taking these roads the whole game, so it shouldn't be too difficult. How you've set your car up will play a huge factor into this. What your suspension settings are like, what your gearbox ratio is set to, things like that. As I've said, I'm pretty bad at it, and I'm sure I can improve and get good at it, but for the sake of this video, we'll save time and move on to other things. You could also go drag racing, and to be honest with you, I never really touched it that much. It looks like it's probably fun. What's also enjoyable is you can street race these two punks that come to town. They'll insult your car, insult your personality, insult you. He won't be talking all that hot shit once your car beats him in a race though, will he? Well, probably, but it's still fun to shit on his car with yours. I should cover some of the bad things before I wrap up. Now, this game is made to be frustrating, so I won't bring up things about it that personally annoy me, but this game is very buggy at times. Sometimes your cars will also just go airborne for no reason, and just catapult into the air like a cartoon. It happens to the player too, but somehow, for some reason, it never happened once when I was recording. Now while the visuals of this game aren't anything perfect, it is only made by two people, the head developer Royla and his wife, and this game is made in Unity. A majority of the detail of this game is in the engine of the car and the Setsuma itself, which I can't fault him for doing since this is a game about building a car and not about living in a town. I understand why some people dislike or maybe even outright hate this game. They probably find it very frustrating to play and not fun, which as I said is the developer's intentions, but I can't expect everyone to want to waste their time the same way I do. That's about all I'd like to say about the game. It's far from perfect, but it's one of the best games around for building a car in. It might not be one-to-one -one with how it works in real life, but no game is. Johannes Royula is already working on his second game in the series, My Winter Car. Now I get all the fun of My Summer Car, but have to suffer the harsh winters of Finland. I can't wait. If there is a next time, I'll see you there.